Should I build a lift up? Maybe a drop down. Or how about a swing out? No, I have another idea and I hope you'll stick around. Hi, welcome back to the Schuylkill River Valley. I'm John. My layout is an around the room design. So I'm going to need a gate to get into the layout. Actually, the sub roadbed is about 48 inches off the floor. So I could get away with a duck under. But I complicated that because the gate is where Peacock's Lock Viaduct, the stone arch bridge that I'm scratch building, is going to go. And when you add the height of the bridge and the scene around it, that's going to bring the the area under the bridge down to around 40 inches. And that's starting to feel more like a limbo under than a duck under. And in my best day, limbo wasn't my thing. So I could build a lift out bridge. Excuse me, I could build a lift up bridge. But with the Peacock's Lock Viaduct scene hanging down, that would leave too much of it sticking out into an already narrow walk space. And people are going to be smacking their heads against it. And by people, I do mean me. A drop down would solve that problem, but now it, it would expose the top of the bridge and all the detail to my knees. So I scrapped that idea. That left me reluctantly with a swing out gate. I don't have a, a valid argument against swing out gates. I've just never really liked them. So finally, I got to the point in my construction where I had to make a decision. And I sat down on it and I decided tonight, I'm going to design my bridge. As I pulled open my desk drawer, my eye happened to fall on the drawer glides. And I had my answer, a glide up bridge. So I went out and bought a couple of heavy duty drawer glides with roller bearings. And I began to design my gate. It's a little dark and cramped in there to try and film any, any video. It was tough enough to work in there. So I'll show you a mock-up I did in SketchUp. So I'll start with a diagram of the layout room. The benchwork is shown in pale yellow. You can see here where the, the gate will go. And although on the drawing it appears to be a rectangle, it really is a trapezoid. So I started by constructing the support legs. They are just three faces and a base. I cut the tops of the, of the legs to correct the angles so that the faces would be parallel when they're installed. The tops of the legs are screwed into the benchwork and the base is screwed into the floor. I made the drawer section of the, the gate out of half inch plywood. The shelf where Peacock's Lock Viaduct will sit is made out of three quarter inch plywood. And the top is made out of masonite, which will serve as the sub road bed for the viaduct. Here is an exploded view of the gate assembly. You can see here why I attached the drawer glides to the legs and also to the drawer assembly itself. I use brass table pins uh, attached into the, the, the top of the, the drawer and also on the legs to register the drawer in the proper position when I lower it. These are simply brass table pins that are typically used to register the, the leafs of expanding dining room tables to make sure that the top remains level. I attach feeder wires at the legs directly to the bus wires. And these are attached to copper pads made out of copper tape. On the drawer section, I drop feeders down from the track, also to copper pads, again made from copper tape. When I lower the gate into position, the two pads come in contact and provide me with power to the tracks. I attached angle brackets to the support legs. These will serve as stop blocks so to hold the gate in place when I want to come in and out of the train room. 
I attached these with only one screw and left them loose enough that they will pivot down into place as I raise the gate. I designed and 3D printed finger tabs to go over the angle brackets. This will make it a lot easier to move the angle brackets out of the way when I'm ready to lower the gate. I also designed and 3D printed handles to aid in raising and lowering the gate. And yes, the finger tabs and handles are a little bit different. The angle brackets that I used came from two different manufacturers and they had slightly different dimensions. So I adjusted the finger tabs and the handles to accommodate them. So that's the design of the glide up gate. Now let's head over to the train room and take a look at it in operation. As you can see, the gate operates pretty smoothly. If you'll notice in the inset, the angle bracket and the finger tab just simply slide down the side of the gate until they can pivot underneath and hold the gate in place. The finger tabs do make it pretty easy to lower the gate when I'm ready. So that's my solution to a gate to get in and out of my train room. I'm really happy with the way this, this functions. It operates very smoothly. It stays out of the way when I'm in and out of the, the uh, layout room. And it's very easy to put down in place. And it lines up perfectly every time. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to comment. I love reading your comments. And if you did enjoy this video and you haven't already, I encourage you to subscribe. And don't forget to click that bell icon so you get notified of future videos. I really appreciate you spending some time with me today. And I look forward to next time.